this. Well, one of the takeaways for me is maybe we should start here. And maybe we should stay here longer and bask in this story problem context world for a long time and then make that transition to the sense, to the, to the number sense that Pat was talking about in, his first, in the first talk uh, later on. Okay, just a thought. All right. Second, I'm not going to take a big jump here. No, whole nother world. It's a world that probably not too many community college folks are, are necessarily in anymore. I know there used to be geometry courses that were taught at community colleges a, a long time ago. So just take it as an example of, of another area in research where we maybe could learn something from listening to our students or from student thinking. I certainly did in this particular case. So this is a task that um, we gave students and Actually, it was over a, a period of a couple of years, and the students were from kindergarten all the way up through college students, including all levels, middle school, high school, whole range of students. Sort of get an idea of how kids are thinking about this at various times over, over their um, age development and mathematical development. And the activity is called, What's My Shape? And I'm going to have you guys do it, too. You maybe have seen this particular activity before, possibly. I unveil clues one at a time, right? And when you know for sure, th this, this would be the, the conversation between researcher and, uh, and subject or student. When you know for sure exactly what the shape is, stop me and tell me what it is and why you think you know what it is. And then I'm going to reveal another clue after that and you tell me whether it changes your mind or not. And I'm also going to ask you about how confident you are. So that's kind of the, the scenario here, okay? But the idea was to try to get at how students are thinking about this kind of stuff. So you can, get, you can play the game too here a little bit, okay? So I'm going to show you the clues, and at the end of the clues, I want you to, when you, when you know for sure yourself, write down the number of the clue that you know the shape is, what the shape is. And also, at the same time I'm showing you the clues, I want you to try to put on your metacognitive hat. So I want you to be thinking about, well, how would, my, how would students think about this? How would my students think about this? How would my children or grandchildren think about this? What would their responses be? Um, what might be going on, in other words, okay? And then I'll give you a chance to discuss with folks at the table a little bit. That's kind of the plan here for this one, okay? So with folks at the table a little bit. That's kind of the plan here for this one, okay? So here's the first clue. I'm a closed figure with four straight sides. I have two long sides and two short sides. I have a right angle. My two long sides are parallel. Uh, clarification question, oh, oh, if you, no, you don't have to, if you, if you know what it is, that's okay, you can keep it, you can just write it down when you're, whenever you're ready. My two long sides are parallel. I have two right angles. My two long sides are not the same length. My two short sides are not the same length. My two short sides are not parallel. I have only two right angles. Now here's your task, here's your task. I am a, write it down, I knew this at clue number, write it down, I knew this because, write it down, private think time first, I'm not going to take any questions for a moment, private think time first, give you a couple minutes to talk to, to folks at your table, and if there are clarification questions, meantime I can float around and try to address them if there are any questions that people want to ask. Okay, talk to your neighbors. Two things. What do you think it is? Where do you think it was? And also, what are some things that your students might be thinking? 
So, so that at, at some point or other, the idea here, of course, is to, when do you have necessary, I'm sorry, when do you have sufficient conditions to determine the shape, right? And, the, and the, the feeling about wanting to make sure another clue, that's certainly something that pops up with, with the students. They say, can I see another one to make sure that I've still got the right idea? Yeah. So you have pointed out uh, a couple of different strategies here that pop up. And, and that is the more common strategy, of course, for our students is to grab onto a prototype and hold it up there. Yes, it still works. Yes, it works. Darn. <laughs> right? So they're looking at it, the clues then as necessary conditions. It's sort of like, the shape I'm thinking of has all those properties. The shape I'm thinking of has all those properties. Uh-oh, it doesn't have that property. Rather than, what are all the possibilities in the world that might be? So it's a quadrilateral, right? It's a quadrilateral. Well, maybe it's a special type of quadrilateral. Well, what type of quadrilateral is it, you see? Working down, sort of like sifting down and eliminating possibilities. I'll take one more. There was one more in here someplace. Is that right? No? Yes? What we found with, with this particular task is it revealed all different kinds of ways of st that students were thinking. And particularly, it, it revealed that there's a predominance of thinking about shapes as a collection of properties. That's a candidate. And then, at some point, most of you, if not all of you, arrived on, at this conclusion. But in fact, there's still one other possibility, which I've only recently realized was a bug in our original task, but wasn't pointed out by, by school age kids. I just actually thought, oh my gosh, because it could be in three dimensions, couldn't it? Right? It could be. There's nothing there that says this figure's in the plane, right? There isn't. And so even most of us, including me, assumed, okay, well, fine, we're playing in the plane. That's the game, right? All right. 